in the previous video, I did a quick uh, test of, of this program, Color Constructor, and it's, on, it's a great tool for figuring out some decent color palettes uh, that are realistic depending on light sources. And so I did a, a sketch here that I wanted to test it on because I want to really see this in action and see how it goes. Um, and some kind of like a uh, animated, stylized thing. Uh, you know, you got this explorer, she's got her dog, and she's got her binoculars. Um, and it's, I had the idea of maybe having um, the lantern as the light source. And, you know, there's kind of a sunset in the back. Or, you know, maybe just after sunset, just after golden hour. Um, so I want to try and figure out the, that color scheme using this uh, to kind of make this go faster. Um, and yeah, let's let's put it in action and see how it goes. So the first thing I'm, I'm seeing uh, that I need to do is uh, establish the light source. So I think the light source, um, since the light source is a lantern, it should be orange. Right, so let's just bring everything down and start from zero, zero, zero. And so push the red. Now that's too red for a lantern. But if we add some green, it becomes a bit orange. So that's good. Uh, <coughs> yeah, maybe that's our lantern. Let's make every, let's make this white so that we can see how that's affecting white. Um, and the ambient. So just after sunset, so it's going to be slightly magenta, maybe um, uh, bluish. So let's uh, push the red up and push the blue up. Uh, maybe the green a little bit. Yeah, I, you know th this is the type of color that you know it's like a nice uh, summery light just after. Uh, Sunset. You can almost feel a bunch of uh, fireflies flying around. Um, at least that's what I'm picturing in my head. All right. So if we look at our painting or our sketch, there's a, you know, I want to have at least three local colors um, uh, in here that are separate, so we can really take advantage of this program. And so we have uh, all these plants. You know, there are leaves and stuff. So we should make one of these balls green. So let's do that to this top right one. All right, so that's how green would look in this lighting situation. Uh, but I want to add a little bit of blue so that it's not like too saturated of a green. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Uh, okay, so what else is in here? Um, we have the mushrooms. So these are big like mushroom shapes. So it's just kind of getting carried away. And if we, maybe we can make them, I don't know, I want something distinct, something different from the other colors, so maybe, uh, maybe something purple-ish. That's interesting, so if you have a purple object and you have this lantern light on it, it'll look red. Yeah, totally. I think we can go multicolored with it and see how that goes, we'll see. Just, you know, give it a shot. And one more color. What, what else can we do? Uh, there's the dog. But we can... Oh. Um, you know, let's give her a, a shirt color that's... Let's try blue. Let's see how blue looks. Right. If, if the ball is blue and the, the light source is warm, then, you know, that's adding yellow, so it's going to look green. Cool. Totally makes sense. Um, I actually had a, a, a chat with uh, the creator who made this. Um, he was explaining all these uh, little symbols and what it means when um, there's, like, the warning sign. And I don't remember entirely how to... Yeah, use these and, and see what happens. I'm just going to go ahead and use this uh, screenshot program that I have. It's called Screen Presso. You can just kind of select and highlight an area, and then it copies it onto your clipboard. And we'll make a new file. And they're all, they should be accurate because they all have the same light source and the same ambient. And if we actually just put this underneath the drawing and put it, like, look, I put it under her face, and look, 
her face is almost done, you know. Uh, and like if we put the green part on the the leaves, let's find a leaf. Uh, yeah, that's that, those are the right colors. And then the mushroom, if we let it line up with that, ah, this is wonderful. Okay, let's see how that plays out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a. I'm gonna select this shadow side of the white sphere and, and fill it in over here like that. Okay, I'm going to paint in the the, uh, the leaves real quick. So this is all in one layer, um, and this is technically the side of the leaf that is getting light cast onto it. So if we were to cast some shadows, it would pick up that ambient light that we set up. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and lock the transparency on this layer by hitting that. And so when it, whatever I paint on here will just go directly on there. So yeah, let's just paint in the shadows and, and kind of, let's see, these back here won't receive too much light. Um, and like as we get closer to the light source, the brighter they should be. Yeah, it's already feeling like it's the way it ought to be. That's really cool. Yeah, and it looks like a nice color because it doesn't... It, often the problem is like when we uh, select or try and figure out the right colors for things we and we go darker, we end up losing the, the, the richness and the, and the saturation. So this seems to answer that problem. And like I, I could have come up with my own color palette, but uh, this let me quickly discover uh, a lighting scenario and how I could use that um, in the painting. Uh, Alright, so let's let's paint the light. Yeah, we want that uh, that lantern to be glowing. Let's uh, just real quick give it one of those. Yeah, so that's no wait. We want it to be this brighter color. Okay, so I didn't do a skin color, but we can just use this. All right, and now I could put in the uh, shadow side. I'm gonna take that dark round, uh, <laughs> the dark round, the background, and make it darker so that it's not the same as the skin color. Yeah. And of course, we can come back and add uh, skin tone variation and all that stuff because right now we're just keeping it simple. Um, So let's select the shadow side of that again, and paint her arm. Yeah, look at that. So right away, um, you can tell that this is working because, uh, so the problem is, like if we were to do it normally, like okay, we have the, the skin tone color, the problem is we would've just gone like that, you know, just darker, all right? And it sort of works, but not really because we want the ambient color, so that's pretty cool. What we can do from here, though, because I think it acts as a really great base, is select that and maybe push it up a little bit to let it pop a bit. But you know, we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and oh, whoops, get these mushrooms all painted. All right, now that we have the mushrooms painted, uh, let's bring that back. So the shadow side of the mushrooms would be this color. And we can add the ambient, I mean the specular as well. So I'm gonna lock the transparency. Now this is all on, on its own layer. If we just go ahead and do that. I'm using the airbrush, default Photoshop airbrush. I don't have special brushes. Um, and I'm implying that the the lantern is casting light. 
uh, onto the. This is all based on the black and white sketch that I did. Um, so this one would be in mostly shadow, as with this. And <clears throat> so for the face, I think what I should have done earlier is uh, make a separate skin tone because this is lacking warmth. So I'm going to just select that and add warmth. So that was, you know, on my part for being lazy. Uh, my bad. So let's see, what else can we do? We can actually use this uh, color here too. Because I know I said I want to use that for the shirt and the clothes, but let's kind of fill it in the background. Oh, yeah, that's nice and rich. Yeah, it's already starting to develop as a, as a nice base to work off of. Oh, I forgot to paint the dog! Alright, so at this point I'm just speeding the video up to kind of uh, get past all the boring stuff. Well, not boring, but whatever you wanna... Basically, I, I, I felt it, it was easier to kind of do a voiceover, so I went ahead and did some extra um, uh, color palette adjustments, like one for the eyeball there, because often we might just put white for the, the whites of the eyes, uh, but really white in this situation would actually look um, no brighter than the, the light source. Um, and you can of course tweak that later on and make it brighter, but uh, that's up to you. So at this point, you know, I, I established the, the local colors that I wanted uh, using Color Constructor, um, and I'm again using that as a base, and it's not going to do all the work for you. You have to kind of, this is where you add your own artistic uh, flair, your own knowledge, and, and kind of like preferences of what you want it to look like in the end. Um, and truthfully, I don't know exactly, like at this point, I don't know the specifics of how it's going to look. It's usually something that grows and develops into something. And you can see me using the airbrush in the background there, kind of softening things up because I wanted to make the focal point um, on her face or, or the lantern generally in that area. Um, I know earlier I, I said that I wanted to have sort of a sunset light coming from the back, but I ended up changing it to be more of a nighttime look. You'll see that in a, in a minute or two. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's been a pretty fun process. And I think it definitely has me thinking differently because before I never, I would introduce different color, like local color objects in my pieces pieces of art, but uh, this is kind of just establishing that right away instead of uh, guessing. So y if you remember, I, I said, okay, I want the the leaves to be green, I want the mushrooms to be reddish or magenta, and uh, you have the, the skin tone, and um, as well as like all the other things. So I'm, I mean, just thinking about that, knowing that, you know, you have a choice uh, will really help your your color process and uh, the, it takes the mystery out of it and of course you can go back and add way more colors and and, and uh, of course you just keep the same light uh, source being the same and uh, so if you just notice there I turned the line work off and it's still held together as a piece so that that's really a good sign that um, your colors are working and your values are all harmonious um, so yeah, now I'm just going in and detailing and making the, uh, the the forms kind of read better and picking and choosing areas that are blurry and not blurry. And uh, if you see that glow um, up on the top left of her head just now, I made a new layer and set it to color dodge and I uh, used an airbrush and like picked like a dark blue or something and I just lightly placed a, a little bit of uh, blue and it makes it glow very nicely. Of course, I did that as well with um, uh, the mushrooms. I think. <laughs> so Photoshop crashed uh, when I was at that point. And I didn't save, so I ended up taking a screenshot from the recording and worked on top of that. So we lost some quality there. But, you know, this is not meant to be a magical final illustration. It's just to explore the, um, the, the use of the program. 
and uh, yeah, so there's the binoculars, putting the rim light. So yeah, I think I mentioned in a previous video about putting rim light on things to help sell the idea of form. Um, and you might be asking why there's a big glaze or wash of magenta everywhere. And I did that to kind of unify and um, harmonize everything. And so uh, I think harmony is important, especially with color. And uh, the idea is that all the colors in your piece kind of show up everywhere. Um, so if you have magenta down in the bottom right, you should sneak it in into other places. All right, so I hope you like this. If you uh, learned something, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out Color Constructor. The link is in the description, and um, you can get it on Gumroad. And again, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Adios.